Hey everybody, this is Freddie with LeviathanScuba.com. So, you're getting ready to buy a scuba tank or a regulator. You basically have two choices, DIN or yoke. Which is best for you? We'll get to that in just a minute. So if you're researching which gear to buy and you're getting ready to buy a new regulator or maybe tanks, which do you buy? Your two choices basically are DIN or yoke. <clears throat> it's subject to the marketing language on the website for the manufacturer, right? Well, they're both the dang best in the whole wide world, so how do you decide? <laughs> That's kind of what it seems like. So you're, they are the two main types of valves used in the scuba world, both on scuba tanks and on regulators. You're going to have to make a choice because you're going to have to match the regulator to the tank that you use. That's easy if you're buying both. If you live on the coast, you have your own gear, you're going to go diving. But what if you're a diver that's going to travel or you're going to go visit or you're going to rent your gear, right? You're going to have to match the type of valve on the scuba tank with the regulator you buy. So here's basically the two that you can choose from, right? This right here, this is a DIN, D-I-N. It has threads, this screws into the valve on the tank and then sits on the valve. And this style is the yoke style. So you can see this piece here, it clamps in the valve for the scuba tank in between it, then you screw it down and it tightens against an O-ring and stops the air from leaking, okay? To give you an idea what I'm talking about, I have two scuba tanks here. They're basically identical and the, uh, the, different, the valves are different, even though they're very similar. Okay, this would be your yoke style valve. So you can see there's an O-ring in there. The, the yoke style regulator clamps down on this. You tighten it down, you go diving. Typically, that's what you've seen already. If you got certified, most likely that's what you use because that's the majority around the world. This would be considered the, the norm. This is the DIN valve. It's the one that has the female receiver. So you screw the DIN valve on the regulator into the, the female part on the scuba tank. Okay, so that's basically the difference. You see the two in a close-up there. One side is, is kind of hollow there and you, you uh, screw into it. The other side has the O-ring you can see on the right and that's what gets clamped down to. Okay, now they're both an excellent choice, right? They're both quality. Um, and they're reliable, they're very simple to use, so that's not gonna be the factors that you use to decide, okay? Um, why do you care, right? What's, what, will it make a difference, and which one do you think you should buy? At this point, you're only subject to the marketing language, but it can be an expensive mistake if you choose the wrong one, or at the least, it could be a big hassle every time you go somewhere, okay? Now, if you're a recreational diver and you live near a coast and you just meander on down to the local dive shop and you have a regulator, you better hope they have the tanks that fits the style that you have, right? Well, that's what we're getting into. Uh, if they have a DIN tank valve, great. Then you have a DIN regulator, you're set, you're great. The problem is 95% of all the tanks used around the world in all the resorts all the, you know, dive destinations, dive shops, things like that, 95% of them are all yoke valves on the tank. So now, if you use uh, the type of a, a DIN regulator and you're going to put it on a tank that has a yoke valve, you're going to need what's called a DIN regulator adapter. Your DIN regulator will screw into the bottom of that. That'll be nice and tight. And then you screw that onto the yoke valve, okay? Most of them around the world are yoke valves, so you're going to have to have that. I'm going to say something here, if it's not already obvious. Using that adapter makes your regulator a yoke style. You could have purchased the yoke style day one, and it would never have been needed. Okay? So, <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me, a DIN, which I'm not German, forgive me if you are, but it uh, stands for Deutsches Institut für Normung, okay? Whatever that means. 
I don't know. I'm not in German. Okay? A DIN valve is a screw-in style, as I showed you. It's a connection located on the first stage of the regulator, and this is a, a regulator with a DIN style. Now, I wanted to show this to show you even all the name brands are going to have both available to you. If it's a name brand, a bigger manufacturer, they're going to offer the regulators in both styles. Okay? Um, a DIN style is considered to be a little bit more secure, especially by tech divers, because you screw it in and the chances of it coming unscrewed are pretty, are pretty much unlikely. Okay? Um, often used in technical diving because you have more tanks. A technical diver can have three scuba tanks. They're going deep, right? They have different valves. They have uh, a tighter space to contend with. Imagine you hauling two big tanks on your back and a pony bottle with three different regulators all within the same space as the average recreational diver with a single tank on their back, okay? Um, the uh, average tank you're using in the world is a yoke style, so using a DIN requires an adapter to connect it to the tank, okay? So the benefit of DIN security is now kind of null and void. It's about the same exact thing as a yoke style. So if you own a DIN style uh, valve, then you need a different adapter to even fill your tank from the compressor. So an example of this is my shop. We have 110 yoke style tank valves. We only have two DIN style tank valves. To just fill up those scuba tanks from my compressor, I need this little adapter that screws into the tank valve and it uses a yoke style compressor fitting to fill up that scuba tank. You're going to have to have that if the dive shop, dive resort doesn't have it just to fill up the scuba tank, okay? Just another piece and another reason why. Eh. Now, most dive shops are going to have something like that to fill if they have customers that fill up both. That's why I have to have it, okay? Now, yoke style valve. They are the attachment point on the regulator, right, to the tank. They fit over the tank valve, like there you can see, that little rubber cap in the middle is where the tank valve will go. And again, you can get any manufacturer with both. doesn't matter, okay? They don't require any adapters. So you don't have to use an adapter to, if you have a tank valve, to fill it up, or to use your regulator with a regular uh, yoke style tank, okay? Uh, they are the most popular style around the world. As I mentioned, 95% of all the dive resorts, dive shops, destinations, use yoke style tank valves. Most of the rental gear around the world is also yoke style, regulators and tanks. So chances are, if you're a certified scuba diver, the gear you trained on and that you're used to and it might seem normal to you is a yoke style, okay? Um, now, if you own a yoke style regu regulator, and most do, and you go to a resort that only has DIN style tanks, I've never personally seen it. I'm not sure why they would, but there is another kind of adapter, and they're going to have to have this adapter for you to be able to screw into your tank. See that little piece that's threaded? It screws in with a hex head wrench. It goes into a DIN style regulator or a scuba valve, tank valve, and then your yoke style regulator, uh, back and forth, back and forth, <clears throat> then your yoke style regulator can clamp right on the top and seal it. Okay? Now, I'd like to make an observation because a lot of times uh, tech divers will bring this up as far as it's a safety factor. They say a DIN style regulator, if it falls on the scuba tank, falls over on the boat, lands on the valve, that it's less likely to break. Um, I, I can't really confirm nor deny, but I will tell you this. I, I've seen both and they both break. So um, typically actually when you when you have a yoke style, this piece here gets bent right here, okay? This piece gets bent and something just doesn't really break. So I can't say one breaks more than the other. I kind of don't think so. I don't know that that should be a, a factor in your decision-making process, okay? I also want to make a point where they talk about it being more secure. <clears throat> I suppose it's possible because it's screwed in, it's going to be really hard for those screws to back out. So I get that. But I want to make an observation too. Most divers around the world dive yoke style. <clears throat> How many times have you ever had your, your regulator fall off your tank? 
especially when you're using it, when it's pressurized. Try this. Put your yoke style on a tank, tighten it down, turn the air on. You have a high pressure bottle. It's going to help hold it on there. It's actually very hard to back it off. It almost takes a wrench or it's almost impossible to do with your hand unless the pressure in the tank is a little lower. Then you can do it, but again, it's very hard. Um, and we have our students that they practice, you know, putting the regulators on the tanks when they're first learning about these things. And then some of them will try to take the tank valve or the regulator off, but they haven't purged the regulator yet. It's a great way to tell. It, they can't get it off. It's like, oh, I can't get it off. And like purge. Psh. Once the pressure's gone, then you can unscrew it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about expense. So if the most common is the yoke style, and that's what sells the most around the world, vastly so, then for a manufacturer to even manufacture DIN valves is going to have an extra expense for them. <clears throat> and if you're going to sell it to fewer divers, you have to sell it for a little bit more money just to get your margin out of it to make it worth even carrying. That's why a lot of the lower end, uh, not lower end quality, but the, the smaller manufacturers only make yoke. But the big manufacturers make them in both. But you're going to spend a little bit more money when you buy a DIN style regulator than you do yoke. Don't think that the money price is equal to the quality or benefit or anything like that. It's simply because it costs them more to make and all the research and development costs need to be divided over a smaller number of regulators. <clears throat> okay, and you have to keep in mind too, if you're gonna own a DIN, you need to own those three different kinds of adapters and travel with them because you're gonna go to a resort that has only yoke style or, you know, to fill the tank or whatever you're going to need the different adapters and that costs money too. So for me, it kind of comes down to this. And really, this is just the rule of thumb. It's easy. I don't do a lot of technical diving anymore. <clears throat> Occasionally, but then I have access to anything I need. So what do I do? I go on recreational dive trips. I lead groups on these beautiful resort locations, tropical around the world. And I'm diving most of the gear that everybody else is diving the same too. So what do I own? I own a yoke style regulator. This one that I'm showing here currently is actually my regulator. So this is what I use. Now, <clears throat> for me, it's a no-brainer simply because of this. I can take this regulator, even if it's in my backpack, I can go anywhere in the world, I can dive it. No adapters, no adjustment, no nothing. I'm not going 250 feet deep. I'm not having multiple bailout bottles and side tanks and all those kind of things. I'm just doing recreational divers, diving, and that's who I'm talking to, okay? So that's what I use as a recreational diver. So that's what it comes down to. If you're a technical diver, DIN can make sense for you. If you're a recreational diver, then yoke absolutely makes sense. You know, I hope this kind of cleared some of it up if you're new to it or if you just weren't sure or you never were exposed to it. That's why we do this. We try to make it easier for you. Um, if you will subscribe to us, we'll let you know when the next video comes out. <laughs> and you know what? It doesn't take but a half a second to hit that like button. It really does help us. For some reason, the algorithm in YouTube, they just, it's kind of tough. You need all these likes to make it work better. So if you like the content, give us a like. Thanks. Make it a great day. Remember, it's not what happens to you, it's what happens with you. I hope that you've enjoyed this video in some way and that it's helped you. That's our goal. If you did, please hit the like button below. And if you'd like to be notified when the next one comes out, just hit subscribe. Make it an awesome day.